Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to talk about the Great Orm Mine. And I, I think it's northern Wales or north of Wales. It's right here. I guess you can call it a peninsula here. Apparently this mine has been one of the main sources of copper in and around the Copper Age. There was uh, an increased um, level of activity in terms of uh, copper mining b between 1800 and 1400 BC. And during that time, it, it, they were producing so much copper that the whole society built around the whole local area, the people living there, they were all dedicated to it full time. So it was truly a mining community. And they were pumping tons and tons of uh, copper and gold and a bunch of other stuff out uh, during a time, supposedly, when, the, according to the Romans, uh, they, they were supposed to be some sort of loose conglomeration of barbarians. If we zoom out here, all of this before even Rome became a thing were, depending on who you asked, were populated by the Celtic people. And that could mean a bunch of other things. Like uh, in, in ancient Rome, they called them the Gauls, but the Gauls were a type of Celt or a Celt was a type of Gaul. It's all, the terminology uh, is so shrouded in mystery. And I think now that I think about it, it's probably at a certain point by design. Because again, uh, the, the Romans were at war with these people for, for years and years. And one way to finally subdue them was Julius Caesar uh, using propaganda and all this type of stuff to really um, use that to its advantage and gain control in the area. But anyway, now that it's coming out that this mine, which is it's like a pretty known monument in the area, it's a tourist attraction now, they were a, a center of that so-called Celtic uh, uh, time period when they were, I guess, at the height of their powers. And again, they must have had such a unique culture that um, they probably were a loose conglomeration of people, but they, and it probably isn't a nation like the way we would think a nation would work. What Rome was, it, it wasn't like that at all. It wasn't this uh, one giant uh, state. It was rather a, a like-minded group of a bunch of people that spanned, I don't know, depending on who you ask, all the way from as west as, as far west as Spain, all the way to Eastern China, and probably beyond that, all the way into, uh, uh, Inner Mongolia, probably, at, at the greatest extent of of this culture, that has so much in common. Yet the people are so um, around the spectrum. Some of them are more peaceful than others, and all that other stuff. And then you get like the one end of the spectrum, like the Huns and Mongols and stuff like that. But anyway, so they find this mine, and it's indicative of so much stuff. So the focus of the first mining boom, 1600 to 1400 BC, involving a full-time mining community, wide distribution of metalwork from Brittany to Sweden. So just to give you guys uh, uh, a visual of that here, Northwest France all the way to Sweden. So this entire area was being influenced just by uh, the copper that was coming out of uh, Great Orm. Suggests greater integration than previously suspected of Great Orm metal into European Bronze Age trade and exchange networks as well as more complex local and regional socioeconomic interactions. So they're changing their mind about this place. Here's another pretty good picture of it. This is like, as you can see, it's like, it's got railings and it's like a, a world heritage site, I think, or some sort of uh, tourist attraction now. And they were producing stuff like this. They were uh, mining gold and flattening them out. And they had a very set way that they would do this. So now you have to ask, well, According to the Romans, anyway, they were supposed they weren't supposed to have this type of capabilities on this large of a scale. Again, that that's, this is pretty much all of Europe that that was that this place, among other places, there are of course there are other mines as well. Um, so there's this one uh, article here that discusses some of the uh, Bronze Age's taste in gold and uh, where this gold was sourced from. So in mainland Europe, the earliest evidence of gold working dates back to about 6,500 years in Bulgaria. And then for Ireland and Britain, it dates to around 2,500 BC. So it starts, uh, it starts here, right next to Turkey pretty much, and then it spreads and it reaches Ireland. That's, uh, that's um, the timeline here. So during that time, so from the time between 2,500 BC to about 1,600, 1,400 BC, They've already had 12,000 plus years of practicing this, and it probably 
the the skills themselves probably date even further back in time, but that's another episode. So they created what would become the most iconic gold artifacts of the early Irish Bronze Age. So this was 2200 to 1800, so a little bit early on in the technology. And again, they were creating stuff like this, which they keep finding. There's a name for this, I forgot. It's like a Luna, Lunalu or something. So yeah, they've, they've discussed uh, 100 of these and more than 80 from Ireland alone. And much more early Bronze Age gold has been unearthed in Ireland than in nearby countries. So again, this land of gold in Ireland is already peculiar enough. So now that they found the source of some of its unprocessed uh, ore, and this is the center of this article here. So the whole lack of understanding of where the gold came from, again, there was this giant hole in their, um, their view of this part of history. And it's been a significant gap, like this guy says, in the understanding of the Bronze Age. <clears throat> so identifying which sources were exploited is vital to recognize patterns of gold procurement, date, and exchange, all of which uh, help generate a fuller understanding of prehistoric uh, societies because right now we only have like the roman accounts and the greek accounts and stuff of the pe of the people beyond because they were the main people whose writings were surviving to this day and it's debated whether or not these celtic uh proto-europeans whatever you want to call them uh pre-roman europeans um where they came from and their history because they didn't have a a, a writing system that survives to this day um so again, understanding their economy and understanding uh, where they got their sustenance, basically their economic activity, their interactions between other groups um, is vital to really uh, putting together this, this model of what they were doing. Because right now the model is just written by the victors still. And that's pretty much all we have in terms of like hard information that we can um, uh, actually read and refer to. Other than that, we just have uh, these these uh, objects from that time period, but which doesn't really fill in the gaps as much as we could. So they conducted lead isotope and major element analyses, which measure concentrations of tin, silver, and copper of more than 50 early Bronze Age gold artifacts. Okay, so they're matching their elemental signatures to gold sources in different types of uh, in different types of mines across Ireland, um, and I think some other mines as well, and in in other parts of. Um, of uh, Britain and, and probably Scotland. The composition of the manufactured gold products did not match any known Irish gold sources, even though there are a number of locally accessible deposits. So um, the Bronze Age, so this could suggest that Irish Bronze Age communities were exploiting a currently unknown gold source or, that one, or one that no longer exists. So maybe they were importing it from somewhere else. And that could also be indicative of their culture. Um, but it gets even more interesting, gets more complex. So the likely origin of the Bronze Age Irish gold that they tested was from Cornwall, which is southwest England, and they're known for exporting as well. Um, so southwest Britain would have been an extremely important region during the Bronze Age, as local populations would have had the ability to control the supply of two of the key materials in use at this time. Um, so again, there was, all this means is there was a lot going on back then, a lot than we actually know. So um, that already is is changing the way if you compare to the ancient sources. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Rome and, and uh, Greek sources. Then it, it, it already kind of flies in the face of that. Um, the study indicates that during the late 3rd uh, millennium BC, trade networks existed between Ireland and southwest England, with unprocessed gold ingots from Cornwall being exchanged for Irish goods, resources, principally copper. Um, so it begs this question then, why would the Irish communities import gold if they already have their own uh, deposits? And that might may have to, one interesting uh, response for that is there's an allure of objects from distant lands. And if you get gold from a distant land, it's more auspicious. Um, remember these people were a lot more um, superstitious back then. They believed in magic and uh, uh, all that type of uh, stuff. And and a lot of people argue this is where cult societies started way back into this time and ones that survived till now through the Middle Ages till now. Anyway, these are very, very um, interesting uh, time period. They're, these people are completely not like us. Um, I, I mean, that goes without saying, but it's just a nice reminder when you're reading something like this. So... Um, 
so the, yeah, procuring a precious resource from a far land, the foreignness of the gold itself gives it magic properties, uh, linked to ideas of sun worship, um, even though they're creating these uh, moon, I guess what can be interpreted as a moon. Um, so yeah, so that, that the whole the whole reason why I'm I'm uh, talking about this is because it's so interesting that uh, more and more stuff is coming out of the Bronze Age, uh, more information and more of the histories being worked out um, that goes beyond just the Roman account. Because again, the you could the Roman accounts hugely important. It's way better than nothing. But again, you have to understand that the people who wrote uh, the history here were the victors of a long, long, long conflict. And so they're already a built-in bias. There's gonna, you just have to take the, 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 their accounts of the Celtic people, um, the Scythians, if you want to go that far, who I, I think they're probably the same people. They're derived from the same people. Because again, I did an episode on this. You, could, you can look at my Scythian uh, episode. But basically in this area, the Ca Caucasus region and probably further east, were where the Scythians kind of rose, not rose to power, but their culture was spreading and it was, it seemed to trace to the, a, a group, a loose conglomerate of people in this area. Now, who knows where, where they truly come from? All we know is that the data leads us to here and then they just spread east and west and they've even raided the Middle East as well. And then the theory is that the Celtic people, the Gauls, whoever you want to call them, the, the, all the people that I guess have German genetics now and, and uh, the genetics of these people from northern Scandinavia and stuff they all became the Vikings they all came from the same cultural uh, origin if you want to say and if you just picture a tree here the tree trunk starts here and then the branches go in all directions and they become their own offshoots of people that's where um, it's being uh explored now in terms of the history but now it's becoming even more complex because these people weren't just horsebacked writers uh and pastoralists i mean a lot of them were but some of them got into mining and and got into uh druid druidism and all of these uh, they had a, a complex religion they had systems again of culture of trade networks and then if you think about doggerland here and how it was obvious and doggerland goes back pre uh, younger Dryas around there so even thousands of years before this mine became even a thing there there was activity there as well so the region is not it's not like the people here even the celtic people who moved in before them there were people there so again um it, the whole idea is complex and it's just interesting to see um some some added layers of history being uh being uh laid down here especially from the field of geology you could just look at um the sourcing the the gold and some of the other precious metals back to this area that counts for something if they all came from here um then uh they there, there's something going on there just like this stuff if someone ten thousand years and now found something and said oh made in china made in china well then they would think okay well somewhere in china at once upon a time there was a culture produ mass producing these things. So it's, it's the same concept. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, I think it's super interesting. If you know anything more about the Celtic people or Druidism or, or even like Christianity and, and Rome and how the two cultures clashed, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys later.